Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to run an independent samples t-test using the program SPSS. So I'm going to go through a research question and then we're going to use our data that has already been collected and run our analysis in SPSS to try and answer our research question. So first, let's start with the research question that we want to answer. So our research question that we're looking to answer through this analysis is, a researcher wants to know whether people who wear glasses differ from those who do not wear glasses on the number of hours they spend studying. So use the data from our sample to answer this question. It also gives you an alpha level to use. So just some things to point out in this research question that help guide us to the fact that we should use an independent samples t-test to answer this research question. So the first part of it goes um, or is related to who is in the different groups that we're comparing. So remember that one of the main differences between this chapter, so this would be chapter 10 in our textbook versus chapter 11, is the type of research design that was used. So this type of research design where we have people who wear glasses and we're comparing them to people who do not wear glasses, those are two completely different groups of people. So we wouldn't have people in both groups, like a, which would be the case for a within subjects design. So this is an example of a between subjects design because people either wear glasses or they don't wear glasses. So they would not be in both of those groups, they would be in one of those two groups. So it's a between subjects design. And we're just comparing two groups. So that is what helps us know that we're doing a t-test. So we have a t-test since it's two groups and it's gonna be the independent samples because our research design is between subjects. And we're just comparing these two groups on that one dependent variable which is in an interval or ratio type of scale, um, the number of hours spent studying. It's just numbers that people are answering. So that's how we know that we're using an independent measures t-test to answer this research question. So let me show you how to do this in SPSS. So of course you have to actually have data in order to do the analyses. So here is my data set that um, represents the data that have already been collected that can help me answer my research question. So again, we, we want to answer this research question of whether people who wear glasses differ from those who do not wear glasses in terms of the number of hours they spend studying. So the first thing that we want to do before we actually run the analyses is we want to go look in the variable view. So make sure um, when you're doing the analysis, you'll start in the variable view here. And the reason we want to do that is we need to know how our grouping variable, so in this case it would be glasses, we want to know how that was um, scored in our data set. So what we need to do is find that variable that represents which of these two groups that we're comparing, which group people are in. So we'll find in variable view that variable representing glasses. So that variable representing glasses, we can expand this label column to see that that variable is representing this question, do you wear glasses? So the important thing that we need to do is we need to look to see how these different groups were scored in our data set. So to do this, we're going to open up this values section here. So to, to um, open that up, we'll click on this and you should see a blue button that appears. So we'll click on that blue button. And when we open that up, it tells us that people who answered yes to this question were given the value one in the data set. People who answered no to this question were given the value two. So really what we wanna do is we just wanna write down the numbers one and two to represent that those are the two groups of people we wanna to compare to each other, is people who answered yes, I wear glasses, to people who answered no, I don't wear glasses. So we don't really have to do anything other than just write down those two numbers. So I'm gonna click OK to get out of here. So now let's talk about how to run this actual analysis. So with most of our analyses in SPSS, we're gonna start up here with the Analyze drop-down menu. So I'm gonna find on that Analyze drop-down menu, 
we're going to go to that option of compare means. So again, the main thing we're doing with our independent samples t-test is we're comparing the mean number of hours spent studying for the people who wear glasses to the mean number of hours spent studying to those who do not wear glasses. So we're comparing those two means, and you'll find in this section the independent samples t-test. This is the one we want to click on. So go ahead and click the independent samples t-test. Let me get this in your view here. Okay, so that should open up this dialog box. And in this dialog box, uh, when you find it, it will show up blank like this. Um, and so what you need to do next is, what I would do first is actually insert your grouping variable. So again, this would be that variable that represents what group people are in. So the two groups we are comparing was people who are wearing glasses to people who don't wear glasses. So I'm going to find that variable and I'm going to move it over here into the grouping variable box. So as a reminder, you can always, if, if you don't like looking at this view of your questions, you can always right click in here and change to display variable names. It makes it a little easier to go through each of your variables. Um, it doesn't change anything other than just to make it easier to find things. So I'm going to find that variable that establishes what group people are in, which was that glasses variable. I'm going to move that over here into the grouping variable box. And then what I want to do next is click right here where it says define groups. So you see how there's two question marks next to the glasses. Um, that is because it doesn't know what two groups we want to compare. So we have to tell the program that we want to compare the two groups of the people who answered yes. And remember, we just looked that up and we found out that people who answered yes were given a value of one. So we're just gonna enter the number here. So we're comparing that group to another group and that was to the people who answered no. And remember that we just looked up the fact that people who answered no were given that value of two. So I'm gonna enter the number two there. So those are the two groups that we're gonna be comparing. So we just enter those two numbers and then click continue. Once you do that, you should see that those two numbers will show up down here next to the variable. So that's our grouping variable. And now what we want to do is we want to say what variable we want to compare those two groups on. So in this research example, I wanted to compare uh, people who wear glasses to people who don't wear glasses in terms of how much they're, they're studying. So I'm going to find that variable in my list and just move it over into this test variable box. So that is all we need to do to set up the analysis. So I'm just going to click OK, and that will give me my output for this analysis. So let me reduce the size of this output so you could see it. All right, so our output always opens up in a different window. And here it is, okay. Okay, so here's the output from our analysis. So you'll see that here is our first box gives us the descriptive statistics that represent uh, the number of people in each of these two groups that we are comparing. So again, we're comparing the people who said, yes, I wear glasses to the people who said, no, I don't wear glasses. So this says how many people are in each of these groups. So that would be the small n, um, or the number of people in the glasses group, and then the number of the people in the no glasses group. And this is the mean for each of those two groups. So this is the average number of hours that people who wear glasses spend studying. So that's what that first row is. And then here in our second row is the average number of hours spent studying by those people who said, no, I don't wear glasses. We have the standard deviation for each of those two groups. Um, sometimes you want to report that in your out in your conclusion. But mainly what we want from this top box is going to be these two means. So those are the two means that are being compared in the t-test. So down here we have our t-test, and you'll see that it actually has uh, this interesting thing that shows up here first in our t-test table. Um, this is the Levine's test for the, uh, well, it's called equality of variances on this output, but what this test e examines is 
the assumption of the homogeneity of the variances. So if you remember when talking about the assumptions of the independent samples t-test, one of the assumptions in order to use this test is that our two groups have about the same amount of variability. And that assumption is actually tested in SPSS. So again, Levine's test is testing that assumption of the homogeneity of variances. And the main thing that we want to do with this test is we want to use it to tell us which of the two columns to look at, or sorry, which of the two rows to look at. So what we're going to do first is we're going to actually just evaluate this value representing the homogeneity of the variances test. So the sig value here tells us how to interpret Levine's test. We're going to use the same rules that we always use when we're evaluating any sig or p-values. We're just going to compare this to whatever our alpha level was. If we find that this value here is less than our alpha level, what that means is that our variances across our two groups are significantly different. And if we find that this value here is more than our alpha level, so if it's bigger than our alpha level, that means that our two variances are not significantly different. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we're going to evaluate that value for Levine's test and what we're going to use that for.